Hi guys, welcome to today's video. Hope you're all well in current lockdown uh, and wherever you are in the world currently. Um, so I hope you're well. Uh, and today's video is just a quick one. Um, that was pointed out that somebody has requested this where they've um, watched the videos all about how to get to this point in your SPSS journey where you're using questionnaires and you've done your analysis, but you notice that you have some uh, qualitative data in there, um, such as an other question, or as a good practice, using some open-ended questions in your questionnaire to really pull out the why question um, from your respondent. So as we've discussed in previous sessions, that you know stats are absolutely brilliant and questionnaires are a great tool, but they don't necessarily provide us with really in-depth data about why a participant or a group of participants have said what they've said and, and why they've said that. So you might well have something similar set up here where you might have an other question where your respondent gets to tell you uh, what you've not put in there, what other things, which is great to know. Or as an example here, as I'm showing you today, here's a questionnaire that was given out to the UK population um, all about climate change and their attitudes to climate change. And this particular question was a follow up question where we were asking the participants to uh, rank on a scale if they think that climate change is important. And we were also asking them as well, um, is climate change natural or is it man made? And could they then go on to explain their reasoning and their thoughts for their ranking and their decision to select whatever answer it was to that follow up question? So as you can see here, we have um, quite a few um, respondents here who have written some words. Now, if you're wondering how to get to this point, if you've not watched these videos before or you're new to the channel, welcome. My name is Dr. Anthony Cliff and we talk about research uh, and how to actually execute that research really, really simply. I'm not going into anything um, too highbrow here. Um, but if you want to know how to get to this page here where we're looking at SPSS, please do check out the links to the video uh, in the description and also um, should be popping up on screen as well. All about coding your data and how to get into here. So I assume that you've done that and you're up to here and we're now asking the question, how do we quantify some qualitative data? Now, if you've watched the previous videos, you'll know that SPSS doesn't like um, uh, numbers, it, you know, or sorry, it does love numbers, I should say. It doesn't like words. So we can't run any stats on that. Of course we can't. So there's two ways to go about changing this and quantifying it and coding it. Now you could, similar to what you've done to your coding in SPSS so far, you can do it directly in SPSS. So for example, um, uh, this person says that they're a student and they don't believe they necessarily have the knowledge about climate change. Um, so you might give that a number one. Uh, the next one here, um, that they believe it's part of human influence. So you might give that a number two. And again, if human influence comes up again along here, you'll give that a number two and so forth. Now that's a quick way and a very rough way of doing it. I don't recommend doing that for the simple reason is when you ask this type of question, you can, they're not just selecting one answer which you can code. They, they might have multiple reasons uh, and very different reasons for their answers in their particular answer that they give. So if you're only gonna go with the one, you're gonna lose a little bit of data there. So what I suggest is a slightly longer way, but I think a much more rich um, part of data is to use something called en vivo. Now, for those of you who are pragmatist or mixed method researchers, um, or if you're a qualitative person um, using questionnaires, you might well be familiar with en vivo already. And I've talked about this on the channel before. Um, and like I say, it should be a video popping up around about now. I'm um, basically talking through the basics of en vivo and, and how to transcribe. Particularly, I recommend that you watch the video all about coding and particularly thematic um, analysis coding because that's the process that we're going to use today. So please do check that out. But I will touch on it very, very briefly. So in vivo, if you don't know, is um, basically the SPSS version of qualitative data. And it's a system that qualitative researchers will use. But we're going to use that today to import some of that data that we've got there and quantify that. So um, if you're not used uh, NVivo before, go ahead and download it and then open up um, NVivo and then open up a file and give it a new name. Um, if you've used NVivo before and you're doing some interviews as part of a mixed methods research project, 
then open up that file. But for me, I'm just creating a new project here. So I'm going to call this SPSS video and then I'm going to click OK. All right, then. So in Vivo is now um, loaded up. And what we want to do is we want to go to import. Now you will see here something that says uh, SPSS classifications. I don't recommend that you um, select that. I recommend that you use your um, your code book that was either downloaded from online surveys or created yourself in Excel. It's going to work a hell of a lot easier um, that process going through the Excel version rather than the SPSS version. Now if you've gone ahead and you haven't watched the videos before where I um, explain the benefit of taking the step to put your data in Excel. So if you've just gone ahead and put it into SPSS, don't panic. All you need to do is go back into your SPSS file, click variable view, find the columns um, which has all your Word data in and simply copy them and put them into an Excel file. So if you have your things in Excel and your code book in Excel, which is great, um, you want to click here where you've got import, you want to go across to survey, and then you want to click Excel. So click on that and then go ahead and find where it is that code book that you've saved it and then click open. OK, and you'll be presented with something like this. Um, so that's all fine. Your respondent to be stored as cases. Um, uh, closed questions, structure attributes, open ended questions will be created as nodes. And the, all this above, we don't really need to worry about. It's this last one here that our open ended questions are going to be created as nodes. And if you're unsure what nodes are, like I say, please check out those NVivo videos. So I say go ahead and click next from the previous page, and then this will pop up here. So this will be familiar to you that we have very similar to SPSS because we've set this up already. We've got a series of um, uh, our data here effectively. We have all our numbers which are coded, but of course this particular one, the one I want to focus on, is question 11 underscore A. So how many rows are used for the questions? It's typically always one and your date order if you had them, but again, not necessarily really needed. So you want to click next. Um, Start to UK ID for your cases. Uh, leave that as is. We don't really need to, uh, to worry about this at this stage. So click next. Now, what's really important here is the only one that we're interested in for this particular tutorial is our question 11a, where we ask people to explain um, what it is that they, what they, why did they select that answer effectively? So you can see here we have um, our closed questions and we have our open-ended, and there's a couple of more open-ended in our study. If you had a couple of other categories as well, they're going to pop in there. But for this demonstration, all I want to import is this one question. So you need to go ahead and make sure that everything else is selected as don't import. Really, really important. So go through and click all these to be don't import. If any open ended questions which you want to be imported, then make sure they're selected as open ended and then everything else can be selected as don't import. OK, so I've gone ahead now and I've done that. So everything is don't import um, other than question uh, 11 underscore A. Then click finish. And then SPSS will, um, sorry, Excel will talk to NVivo and it will import that for you. You'll get four ticks, you'll get a close bar there. Great. And then click close. So now in our imports, it's going to open up now, and we can see that um, this is respondent one, respondent two, respondent three, and so forth. So here we can see their particular answers. So um, for our fourth participant, um, let's have a look what they've said. They've said that um, as a geography student, so they believe that people with no knowledge don't understand the complications and the issues that climate change has in relation to the planet. So, I would suggest that this is um, kind of encompassing where people have said that there's no knowledge, so people lack knowledge. It's basically what I'm getting from, from that particular thing. So again, you want to highlight that. Um, you can highlight all that if you want, but I think this is the this is the key quote here, is people with no knowledge. So you want to highlight it, right click, and then you want to click code. You want to click new node so it's popped up here 
and now you want to give that um, just like we have done in, in SPSS where you give that a value or in this case you give it a, a name so here we're going to say um, no knowledge or lack of knowledge about climate change and then we want to click OK now if that crops up again then we're going to code that as the same um, on Xpersin, it is in part when something happens as a result of human influence. So we're going to highlight that, we're going to right click it, we're going to click code, we're going to click new node, and we're going to say human influence. Click OK. Um, and I see this is the reason why I suggest um, that we don't do it directly in SPSS, because you see here this person has um, a very lengthy answer, which is great. Um, and there's a couple of different things in there. Um, so this person is talking about morality, so you might want to highlight that, right click and code that. New node, morality. Click OK. Um, so this person's also talking about um, um, companies, so code, um, again, new nodes, so uh, companies, click OK. This person here said if people cared for the planet, had better morals, could be better protected, so again, that kind of comes down to morality, so I'm going to right click. I know that I have um, already coded that, so I find morality, I'll highlight it, click on it, and then click OK. So that's then added in there. Um, here it's going to affect um, everybody, so that's really important. It's going to affect us all. Uh, some people have put so you just go through and you code them, um, and then you're sorted. Really, you go through, you do that, make your decisions based on your codes. And again, if you're stuck on how to code this, then I honestly suggest that you do watch those videos about how to code. So let's say you've gone through and you code all of them. I'm not going to do that for this particular one. Um, but then what you want to do is, once you've done that with your data set, you want to close that. And then what you want to do is you want to go to Share, and then click Export Codebook. And then here, your nodes, you want to make sure that your um, whatever file name that you give that Excel file um, into Envivo is selected you want to click include number of files and references and then click OK. What that will do is it will spit out a codebook for you um, and then here we can see that um, you'd have a list of all your nodes um, running along here and then you'd have a references here and that'll tell you how many people have said that particular thing so as I didn't code it all um, but if you remember before, we had two for morality. So that shows there that there's um, two people who have said that. Now, of course, you will have plenty more of these, and these numbers will all be very, very different. Um, and if that's the case, then you go through and you find out what's the biggest one. So how many? So basically what I mean by that is, is what particular node have most people said, and then you've got that number there, so you can say, um, you know, 10 people said this or 20 people. And if you know, for example, that you have um, 100 people in your sample, so therefore if you have 10 people saying that, you can say 10% believe that morality um, is an important issue when asked on their reasoning about their decisions on climate change. So really, really simple to do that. And of course, you can use the, um, uh, the sort function um, if you've not used that before um, on um, Word. So you highlight the column, click on the A to Z um, short list here. Uh, it's column four, we want it to be descending, so we want um, the biggest number at the top. Click OK, and as you can see here now, morality is at the top, and then companies and so forth. But of course, if you had a bigger number here, the next one, it would go down. Then you want to go ahead, obviously, and make this look a little bit neater, um, but then you have a really good grasp there on what that's saying. Now, if we go back to um, Envivo and we go to um, nodes on our left hand side here, what's really, really useful in um, 
in vivo is of course it's great to know how many people have said a particular topic um, and of course you can do some um, uh, statistics on that you can quantify it um, but of course you want to add a little bit of weight to that so let's say for example here if we said that um, the biggest um, opinion was morality um, then you know obviously talk about that but if we double click on morality it brings up everything that we've um, highlighted in relation to morality so we could talk about morality and then we could say open quote if people care more for the planet and had better morals then it could be better protected close brackets um, and then you can just say um, you know participant two or participant one or um, just simply questionnaire response so adding that qualitative data to really support those statistics like I say, super, super easy, really, really um, quick to do, um, and it shouldn't take you um, very long at all. Uh, so, as always, please do subscribe down below uh, if you haven't done already. And just like this person, if you have a video that you want to uh, want me to cover that I've not covered, please do just give me a shout, and I'm more than happy to do that. So, thank you um, for sticking around for this video, and I'll see you again soon.